we should be live on your channel, huh? So, and I think we're live, Didi. <laughs> Are we live for sure, Sean? <laughs> we, <laughs> we might. We might be live. Uh, can someone tell us if we're live? We're live. We're live. <laughs> who's th who's telling you that we are live? I, of course, we are live. Me, because me. I'm, wa talk. I'm watching us. <laughs> Hello, everyone. <laughs> Jordan, welcome, uh, Mr. Gonzo. Yeah. Uh, no, we're live, oh, oh I hear a double echo now. <laughs> I hate hearing my own voice. We're, good. Like We're in there, mate. So what's happening? I heard a rumor you sold all your uh, your Bitcoin. You're, you're buying a, uh, you, not a Lambo, but a Ferrari and working for a bank these days. Is that true? Um, at the moment, yes. I sold all my Bitcoins. I bought a house and I bought apartments and real estate and gold and silver and fuck off. Of course not. That would be the like, most restarted move that you could do at the moment. But yeah, some people prefer a house and real estate and gold and silver. And I respect them, but no, that's not my move. Sorry, Sean. <laughs> Good to eh? see you again, my friend. I always love having a, a, a chat with you, the man that went all in, my first ever video. God, how many years ago now? It's, it seems like a long time. Uh, um, here, I think here, it's here already like that. Three, four years ago, Sean, I think it was the best video ever, you know, on the white beach with the palm trees, women with bikinis on the background. What more do we want? That was like had the ultimate view of Bitcoin life. <laughs> now we're all locked down. <laughs> I dare. I'm actually, I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm enjoying some freedom uh, down here in New Zealand at the moment. Loving yeah, every minute of it. deserve it. You deserve it after the like lockdown in Singapore for like a year almost, huh? Uh, was well half, half of the year without seeing another human being. Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> oh Lord! Anyway, let's get down to business here, Daddy. So um, the, the 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 Bitcoin price has obviously been jumping around a bit. I've been watching your videos. Link link below to uh, Daddy's channel. People, he makes outstanding content on the regular. Um, funny story. I was around at a friend's house here in New Zealand on Sunday, and he had one of your uh, your raspberry pies. Got his oh, code. Don't get me started. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna have, we're gonna have a look at uh, that shortly. Uh, let people know how they can get one themselves, and also have a look at your BAM indicator. But look, um, you know we've had had some wild swings in the last uh, twenty four hours. Not that that's amazing in Bitcoin, but uh, nearly a ten percent play there. You did a video a couple of days ago about miners selling off. It appears like we've we've still had some of that out of out of China, especially. I think they've just finished their their wet season so it's time to uh yeah. take a bit of profit which they they typically do around this time time of year and upgrade machines etc or do you think there's more to uh, the sell-off is it people waiting to see what the biden exchange is going to do that's the other thing getting floated around where do you think we're at sort of fundamentally at the moment well, I think fundamentally they are all doubting at the moment. You know, they are doubting if we reach the, the 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 top already, and they all want to take profit because a lot of rumors are talking about we go could might we might fall back to twenty five or twenty four k. That would be a forty percent crash. So I think a lot of these miners, you know, and I don't know when Chinese New Year is. Is that also not upcoming? Always around this period. Uh, oh, I should know this, shouldn't I? <laughs> yeah, because, uh, you know, it's like it's every year again around this Chinese New Year, we see this dump. So I well, can't we've, got, we've got Maggie from Singapore, not that uh, Singapore is China, but they certainly celebrate it there. Maggie, when is uh, when's Chinese New Year? Can you let us know? I don't normally I know it as well, Sean, but I'm, I'm, I was so busy the last two weeks, I didn't pay attention. But normally we see a dump around that Chinese New Year right? or they take profits or whatever they do. But um and you could see the outflow of the huge uh, of the miners, of course, on the chart that I shared. It was like, okay, that was a huge peak. Yeah, that was like <laughs> as if they were selling all their. It was F two pool that was yep. dumping all the bitcoins. Um, you know, twelfth of February, by the way, Didi is, is Chinese New Year. Yeah, so we are almost there. Yeah, so that's yeah. Uh, there's also always volatility around that uh, date. I don't know why, but it's always. Uh, maybe they need, they need to cl close the books because of the taxing and everything for the next year. I don't know what they do, but um, um, but I think fundamentally we are just getting started, Sean. There are so what? many big players joining the game that I really start to realize that Bitcoin 
is becoming what we already were shouting for four years, you know, when we were still crazy drinking Bacardi Coke on an island on Copangan and, and, and talking in those bars, this is becoming the truth. It's becoming the 21st century goal that you can use as a peer-to-peer -peer cash and that you can trade as a stock or any other asset. And that's very unique. We have never experienced this before as humanity. So I think that this institutional FOMO uh, will drive Bitcoin um, way much yeah, higher. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I, you know, we've been very excited about the institutions coming in. I've, you know, we've had Michael Saylor, obviously. I, th I think he's taken as a corporate treasury or, or he's effectively made about 1.3 billion is, is, is my understanding from his investment so far. He's been buying these dips. We've had a couple of other big players buying dips as well. Uh, to what degree do you think thirty thousand is, is is a really strong support here? Or uh, you know, I, I heard you mention in your video uh, earlier today that as, as far as a leverage trade, you're probably waiting to see a breakout. Or we've obviously got that descending triangle at the moment, so we're probably highly likely to see some action pretty shortly. Do you think it's going to be to the upside, or are, uh, are we are we going down? Uh, might be a, a good time to yeah, you know, have a look at a chart shortly. I, I'm I'm wearing I'm wearing I'm wearing always two hats, Sean. So I'm wearing the hodler hat and I'm wearing uh, the trader uh, hat as well. Um, has your trader hat got big? I think this is the chart. You... <laughs> no, not at all. I not know you all. like uh, a flutter, Dee. I, I, know, I know you're a big time hodler, but I know you like a flutter too. So <laughs> tell us about your flutter. Um, what do you, you say? Uh, well, well, I'm I'm just seeing this. I'm uh, this chart is already on my screen for a couple of weeks. I've been talking about it in the YouTube videos. This is a four-hour chart. I think we are uh, beautifully moving inside this pattern. Um, I can see this small trend line coming up now here because we are creating a higher low every time and also a higher high. So I expect maybe to reach another higher high around this thirty-four thousand six hundred, and then it becomes exciting. I think are we going to break out here? To the upside and we would break out this huge move over here which could bring us to 44k or yeah. indeed are we going to go down here again and break to the downside break the support of 30k which i think is really difficult because there's a lot of buy orders at 30k at the moment but if we would break it um, i think it would fall to 27k and at least in the end yeah this is the area everybody else is talking about that we could fall all the way back to 24k mm. um i I really don't want to see this happening. I can't see this happening because in the first week of February, um, and I think that is a very important one, we are this Sunday we are going to close this monthly chart. Huh? Mm. So we've um, also got an important date coming up, fourth uh, of February. Uh, we've got four billion dollars worth of of options expiring. Uh, yeah, it, it's certainly very much in, in, in favor of longs there. So how, how that might affect things, obviously, it sort of coincides with the bottom of that triangle as well, which is going to be interesting. So what do you got yeah, here? Yeah, I think it's ex it's exactly at the end of this uh, of this triangle. And if you if you look at this chart, this is the monthly chart. Uh, this is the BLX. Then you know this candle that we are closing Sunday could be very important because if we are going to close this candle around around twenty nine thousand then it would be a gravestone doji, which means a reversal in the market on the monthly time frame, yep. which not makes me scared or I'm not freaking out because then I still see us going back indeed to 25K and you know move around this area before we break up again because I am comparing all these moves to the 2017 move. And I will yep. do, show you that as well. But if we would close around 29, like then you get this type of doji, which normally means a reversal in the monthly. You know, so th that's why I, Sunday is, I think, a very important um, a moment. Um, if I need to, um, I can move it like this. I think. If we look at this, um, let's take this one. This is the BAM indicator. Wait, I will switch to this one for a second. I'm keen to have a very good chat on your BAM indicator tonight. I'm about to uh, leap back. I've just been spot trading alts uh, recently, but uh, a bit of leverage action on BTC is just around the corner. Yeah, we can have a uh, um, we can have a chat about um, 
about the damn indicator as you if you want as well but i'm searching one chart sorry sean that it's taking this long oh we are live oh it's completely terrible um so if we take a look at this one eh? i will zoom out because this is the four hour chart we are uh, uh, we are now looking at and eh? this middle line i think is an important line and if i zoom out to uh, let's say to the weekly, then you probably understand what I'm saying because this midline, this is the midline of the logarithmic growth curve. This is becoming, that's already there. This curve is the curve that's coming from. Yeah, this is what we spoke about at length in our last video. I think this is a fascinating uh, metric to, to look at. So yeah, if you could explain that yeah, to the audience we are, again. Yeah, we are, we are exactly at that line. We are still fighting this line. And we were fighting this line also in 2017. So for me, this is the, the, the line I'm, I'm, I'm really looking closely at. And if we would, um, if we would repeat, I oh, should, I need to do it over here. Um, sorry, if, I, if we would repeat this move in 2017, John, you can exactly see what is happening. You know, then we would be at this move. And we, we did form the same, uh, pattern of triangle over here. And we did see yep. a huge drop of 20% from the bottom of this triangle. So we did drop at that moment from 23 to up about 1800. If we would compare these two moves, then we would be doing the same move around here because it's, and it's around this midline area. If we would drop 20%, we would drop um, indeed to 20K, 24K. And then we would again, you know, that would be, sorry, it would be this drop over here. Sorry, I, I drew it over there, but it's, oh, I should have been drawing it over here. And then it can, would it can return to the upside to fight this midline again over here. And then we will see this explosive move. So then we will we'll see this explosive move to 120K, the top of this line, which then already could be, you know, between April and July, which in my opinion is too early. Because we mm. normally top out in December, so it's it's a difficult um, yeah it's it, it's it's not completely clear what is happening at the moment, but there is a chance that we could drop to that level. Um, I am not seeing it. I I am I'm, I'm not believing it because I really believe that these institutional investors at the moment are buying up um, those dips. Yeah. And, and that's what we see in the charts because everything every time when we try to break this. 30k level um, on this one. Every time you try to break this 30k level, Sean, we just bounce. We try to break it here, we bounce. We try to break it here, we bounce. We try to break it here, we bounce. So it's it's beginning. Uh, yeah, it's becoming very uh, exciting to see what will happen because you you are talking about the fourth of February, and that is exactly uh, here. Yeah. So all of these things are coming together: the monthly close, the opening the expiry of all these options. I think that is now next Friday. It's more a few billion. So yeah, very exciting mm -hmm. to see what happens. Again, I, I know don't freak out, Sean, because I believe that whatever happens, if, if we might break out here, you know, we, we always come back to retest before we go up again. And, yeah. and the same way, if we break downwards, we will come back to retest and then go down. So for me, there's yeah. always a trading opportunity. I, luckily, exactly. I, I think they're, they're, they're both going to be the obvious, obvious trades, aren't they? Whether it's whether it's up or down, uh, I, I think we're fairly clear on on what those levels are. I'm certainly uh, I'm certainly a fan of picking up some cheaper Bitcoin, but uh, I think uh, you know that breakout to the upside is is uh, also going to be a pretty pretty uh, good trade. I think as well. And, uh, you know, to be very honest, you know, you do a lot of shows with Lisa. Uh, she, she is a damn good trader. I'm just a dude that went into Bitcoin all in and, and, and learned to train, uh, trade afterwards. And that's, that's also the reason I'm a very emotional person. Uh, that's why I use the BAM indicator, um, you know, because I, I can't depend on my emotions when I'm trading because, you know, that's... Uh, Those that's, uh, emotions and trading do not go together, do they? Not in the exactly. slightest. They don't go together, and drinking and trading doesn't go together as well. I, uh, <clears throat> I do drink now and then. <clears throat> My Bacardi Coke, Sean. So uh, <laughs> it's different. It's uh, it's it's very uh, yeah. It's not good to trade, and that is why you know I I, I use the Bam Bam indicator. That's that's just the only reason. Um, I can show you if you want. 
Yes. Yeah. As as I say, uh, I, I know a few people that uh, from from my circle that are actually using it. Um, I, I had a look at it with you last time. Uh, I'm I'm jumping back into some Bitcoin trading next week, so I'm intrigued to to learn more about this. Yeah, there are two different things, John. So um, if you have time, I will I will want to explain something very clearly because we was just uh, the the Bitcoin family. We have an own token. This token was just launched on CoinGecko. I'm getting crazy of the messages at the moment because I didn't even know we were launching on CoinGecko and bam, we were there. Um, the whole idea behind the Bitcoin family is create a financial model where we earn fees by creating projects and use these fees to support poor people all over the world. Show this in YouTube videos and by this lead by example and show the world what we are doing. A few of these projects that will um, that will fund this fund. So we started the trust fund. This fund will be filled with all the projects, profits we make. And this fund we will use to share. And that is what we do as the big Bitcoin family. Everybody that is helping us is the Bitcoin family and will help us help others. And by this, you know, lead by example. And a few of those projects we already started. One of them is the BAM indicator. The BAM indicator is this one. Then we started another one. That has that's the name is BFET. That is the Bitcoin Family Automated Trader, and we are going to launch another project at the end of this week or there's the beginning. One, there's of one in New Zealand, Didi. I saw it on Sunday. I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm, I'm hopefully I'm not just the second purchase. Uh, <laughs> no, I, um, I don't know if Scott's watching. Shout out to him if he is. I think he was going <laughs> to join us. He's, he's got one of yours in his house. <laughs> so yeah. saw it on Sunday afternoon. Yeah. So the B, the BAM indicator we are already using for some time, and uh, this one is like really working well. The BFET we just launched this week. We have some startup issues of a lot of questions of people because it's an automated trader. People think we will be rich in a minute because, but it's a long-term compounding trader. Um, yeah. So, the, the, but it's working at the moment, and um, the BAM indicator is manually trading. The BFET, that's the automated trader, is automated trading. And we will launch another project this week that is called a spot trader that is to use an indicator to just buy and sell Bitcoins. So what we are trying to do is we are trying to educate people from the beginning, paper trading. Then we take them from paper trading into spot trading, just buy and hold Bitcoin and sell at the right moment because then they don't lose because of leverage. And if yep. they are educated enough, we take them to leverage trading. And if they don't like to trade any of them, they can use the automated trading. But okay. the fees we are making with all these projects, they are going into this fund that we will use as the Bitcoin family to help people all over the world and to create projects, again, for people all over the world. Yeah, Danny, look, you're, you're, you're absolutely awesome on that front. I've, I've, the entire time I've known you, I've seen how much you you do give back uh, a bit of a rarity in, in the crypto space. <laughs> So, uh, you know, I'm I'm all for helping promote what you guys do. On that note, people, uh, there is a link below to to the BAM indicator if you want to check it out. Uh, I've had a, some rave reviews about your Discord as well. Got a great little community over on uh, on your yeah. channel. So do check that out, people. Yeah, so, um, and indeed, the Discord is growing. It's it, I think we are almost 2,500 members now on Discord, chatting about Bitcoin, blockchain, and life every day. Uh, really cool community really cool family i should call it because it's my family yep. um, the bam indicator works on any time frame this is the bitcoin chart this is the 15 minute time frame and it works very simple sean you have the what, what level of trader do you think this this is what i mean what, what who do you think it's designed for who, who's using it at the moment um at the moment everybody is using it so from starter from beginner to uh, to, to very experienced trader but we because we noticed that the people that are just starting with trading have some problems with leverage because of fear. You know, they go into a trade, but they don't know when to take profit or stop loss. We designed the spot trader as well for the beginners. So they understand that they cannot lose their Bitcoins because people need to understand that spot trading, you just buy Bitcoin. For example, you buy Bitcoin over here at 31,000 because it says along and you sell Bitcoin over here at 32,000. So it's $1,000 profit with, if you trade with one Bitcoin. Of course, if you do a trade with 0.1 Bitcoin, it's $100 profit. Yep. So we are teaching the people to not be afraid of the BAM indicator and to start to trust the indicator because of um, spot trading. Then mm -hmm. when they are advanced, we will take them to leverage trading. And we always trade with 1% of the Bitcoin price with only a leverage of 10. So we are not stopped out that quickly, you know? Yeah. And then you can see that if you, if you for example, take this long, 
this was yesterday around three o'clock in the afternoon, um, the BAM indicator is giving a long signal, the flag. This signal will be sent to your telephone or to your Discord or to your Telegram, whatever, and will tell you, watch this, uh, look at the charts now because we're going to see a long. You will receive this uh, a signal, you will go to the charts, and you will see this long flag. Yep. That is not the moment we take the trade. We wait. We wait for a triple confirmation. We wait for this green candle to close above this yellow stepping line, which is above here. At the same time, and we can see this bam bam indicator here crossing the white line, which is also the second confirmation of taking this trade. And we can also see the sand and the sea. This is the area where the bulls don't like to play, turning into green, the hills and the grass. This is where the bulls want to play. So this would be the moment for us to take the trade. We would mm -hmm. enter the trade with a 10 leverage at 31,500. Let's say it like this. At the moment, we see a short flag we get again the signal. We already get a signal here because the blue line is crossing this green line. Then we yep. see the short flag and we can start to look at the charts again because we are, giving, we are getting like this attention. We could go into a short, we could need to exit this trade. If you want to play it yep. safe, you just exit at the moment you see this green going into red. And you can mm -hmm. see if you do an exit later, then you exit when this cr crosses the yellow line, but then your profit is left. But let's say you just stay in because you have a trading stop loss and you stopped out because this candle is clo closing down below this line. So Didi, then question, if, I, if, if for people who, who uh, use the indicator, these, the, these signals are coming up automatically, you're seeing the short flag come up or could you explain a bit more about that? Um, so or, or do they need to sort of interpret this and go into the, the discord and, and what, what sort of the, uh, no, the, 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 these, if you buy the indicator, then these flags will be added to your trading view charts to any chart. Right. If you use Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, uh, Tesla, gold, whatever chart the indicator works for. Fantastic. If you want to have automated uh, signals, then you need to join the discord server because the signals are sent from the discord server. If okay. you have an advanced advanced um, subscription to TradingView, you can also auto set these trading signals yourself so that they go to your Telegram or your email or whatever. So there are mm. multiple ways of setting these uh, alarms. Okay. But like you can see, th this, this trade would have been a very safe trade from here to there, which would be 1.9% profit with a leverage of 10, 90%. So this BAM indicator makes you 20% with this one trade on the 26th. And that is how we treat the market. This, um, then the next trade, just to give you an example, could have been the short, but I would never take the short because we will only take the short when the candle closes down below the yellow stepping line. And mm. when this yellow stepping line is going sideways like this, we will never take the short because there is no blue sea, there is no volume, no support, and we didn't cross this red line. So it's always yep. this triple combination. And then here we can see it happening again, the long candle closing above the yellow stepping line, crossing the white line, the sand going into the green. The Trinity line is the same as a traffic light, green, amber, red. That's the correct combination. That is a definite long. So we take this long. And again, mm -hmm. it's a profit of like a few percent times the leverage of 10. So that's how easy the Bam Bam indicator works. And it works on the 15 minute, it works on the 30 minutes, and the four hour, it works on Ethereum. And sometimes it works even more better on Ethereum because of Ethereum is like, yeah, it's, it seems to be easier trading. Didi, has your trading increased? I know you're going into winter there in, <laughs> in, in Portugal. Are you stuck indoors with, with the family trading away or? <laughs> no, I wish, I wish. No, I only, to be honest, mostly I trade the four hour chart nowadays because I just don't have the time anymore because yeah. the Bitcoin family project is really growing very fast and there is a lot of work involved. And you yep. know, Sean, I still want to just enjoy life. I, I still want to be on the beach and do my thing. And I still create YouTube videos every day. So there's a lot of time that goes in that. Um, I figured out, Sean, I want to help other people in the world. And I can do this by doing this myself. Yep. Or I create projects. Because let's be very clear and, and very transparent here. Everybody that signs up to our indicator signs up through our referral links to exchanges. On these exchanges, we as the Bitcoin family earn a little bit fees because people trade. So I figured out if I use all people's, um, if I get people to trade on using my referral link as a Bitcoin family, we will make a little, lot of fees on these exchanges. 
And these fees, I don't want them. I can use those fees to share them with other people. So people keep doing what they always do. They trade. They only click my referral link to trade. By this, they help the huge Bitcoin family grow even more. We can give away to poor people. We can show this again to the world leading by example. Bitcoin is not only there to become wealthy yourself, but also to make it even, uh, create an even wealth around the world. Also for the poor people to give them access to the uh, monetary system. And that is how this community will evolve and become bigger and bigger because they just do what they love to do. They love to trade and we yeah. love to share. So that is how they become part of the family. And that is why we are developing all these projects. We just want to use those fees for good things in life. And, um, and that, that well, resulted now. you for a good, good number of years now, Didi, and yeah, you, you, you just not, not amaze me anymore because I've seen it so often. You guys really do give a, back a hell of a lot. Uh, you know, we need, we, need, we need more of that. Especially at the moment. Yeah, no. So good on you. At the moment, it's a, it's a strange world where we live in, but, you know, we need to see it positive. And it's also, um, yeah, we, 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 a lot of people now also woke up and saw that, you know, that, that, that they should change lives because you never know when you get locked down or locked up or whatever, you know, just need to live every day. And then, um, yeah, that's a uh, other discussion that's more political. And, uh, <laughs> you know, my strong feeling about that. So I won't, <laughs> I won't talk to you about that because then we will get a, oh, no, we'll, we'll have a, we'll get into some more sort of general stuff on life in a moment, but okay. I think we're, I think for everyone watching, um, you know, we're, we're, we're my position on, on, on BTC, for, especially for a leverage trade at the moment, I'm, I'm really, it's a bit of a wait and see for me at the moment. Um, it's going to break in one direction and I think it's going to break pretty significantly, whichever way it is, uh, certainly in the next week or so. So let's see how that goes. Ethereum, uh, we have seen some massive inflows into Ethereum in, uh, in January. Yeah. Uh, how's yeah. it looking at your uh, your balanced portfolio? What are your thoughts on it? Um, so I started adding Ethereum um, to my portfolio when Ethereum was around 600. I, I also said it that, uh, at that time in my YouTube videos. Guys, you know, Ethereum is at 600. Bitcoin already doubled now from its previous all-time high 20K to 40K. Um, Ethereum yeah. will copy Bitcoin's move. So if you want to get into Bitcoin, that was the moment I was exchanging some Bitcoins to Ethereum. And yeah, Ethereum went now to 1400, uh, dropped back a little bit. I expect Ethereum to grow far much higher because understand Bitcoin surpassed its all-time high of 20K yep. and doubled that one. Ethereum yep. started to copy the first move in reaching an all-time high. I expect Ethereum to copy the second move as well. I think Ethereum will also try to double its previous all-time high, which would bring Ethereum to 2,800 US dollar. Um, yep. And even if we underperform, then we would still uh, see Ethereum going to, to for example, $2,000, which would be yep. a, a normal uh, level for Ethereum to reach. And I think if you, uh, I was in yesterday's video or the, the day before, I had a, a chart on how you could see that Ethereum uh, was outperforming Bitcoin uh, at the moment. You know, in the last three months of 2020, um, Bitcoin, of course, outperformed Ethereum because of the huge run. But mm. the rest of 2020, e Ethereum was outperforming Bitcoin, kind of. And now the first month, of course, Ethereum is outperforming. Uh, wait, I have the chart here. Yeah, share it with you if you want. Absolutely, I'll just do a few shout outs while you're bringing that up, Didi. Yep. Hello, Vlad, Maggie, Crypto, I love it. Uh, great job on the coin gecko listing on family token from him. Uh, Didi, how does the value of family token increase? We'll get to that in the moment, sir. Uh, someone is saying, yep, well, Ethereum's going to pump hard. I agree. I agree. So, yeah, let's yeah. have a look at this uh, this ETH chart, Diddy. And if you haven't hit the like button yet, people, please do that. Let people know we're here. Thumbs up, share it, and all that stuff. Give Sean some love. Hard for king. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a what very have we got simple, here? It's a very simple chart. You see the monthly returns of Bitcoin and Ethereum in the last 12 months. So you can see the blue is Ethereum, the yellow is Bitcoin, of course. And you can see in 2020, Ethereum was outperforming Bitcoin almost every month. You know, only this month, Bitcoin was better. This month, Ethereum was better. Ethereum was better. Ethereum was better. Ethereum was better. It was only up to the last three months here, October, mm -hmm. that 
Bitcoin start to outperform um, Ethereum. And here, of course, also. And now in January, we can see that if you look at monthly returns, Ethereum is way ahead of Bitcoin. Mm. So I think that this 80% over here, you should, we should compare it to, let's say, the move of Bitcoin over there. The, this was the move that Bitcoin started to like really outperform Ethereum because of the run of the beginning and here even more. And this mm. is the first month, I think, that Ethereum starts to really outperform Bitcoin because it still needs to double. So I think February and March, I think Ethereum will easily reach 10K. Uh, 2K, sorry, 10K. <laughs> 2K. <laughs> and, but there are some people, you know, I don't know if you saw the videos, they expect, like, I think, I think it was Bitmore Boy and Call the Moon, you know, they expect Ethereum to go 20 to 26K this year. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, you know. Well, look, I mean, there's a number of things happening here. Obviously, we've had a, a huge amount of high net worth individuals and institutions come into the space. They've clearly under, un, understood that uh, digital gold narrative that, that's really taken hold strongly, especially over the last 12 months around Bitcoin. They get it. Uh, Anti-inflationary, all this money printing, et cetera. They, I mean, they're, they're buying that up left, right, and center. As with any market, this is true of all, all markets. They go through those phases where, you know, the bellwether investors will move to, to the next tier down. Where's the next 5X? Where's the next 10X? I think we're seeing that action in Ethereum at the moment. We're also seeing, you know, someone like Raul Paul, uh, who is talking in terms of, you know, buying 10 altcoins now. And I think a lot of the, the, the more astute in, investors are playing that game. And we've, we've obviously seen the Bitcoin dominance come down to 60% the other day, a very, very yeah. low figure. Uh, so, you know, clearly a lot of money is going into alts. I mean, we know those cycles, it, 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 it'll come back into Bitcoin and we're going to see that big run up. For me, yeah, I think Ethereum has got a massive upside. I'm, you know, it's, it's touched that all time high. There's obviously these issues around gas fees. And I actually recorded a, a video earlier today on something called gas farming, which I'm going to uh, post uh, tomorrow. It's really quite fascinating. The, uh, 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 Stefano and, 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 and Jordan uh, are looking closely at this. I'd encourage everyone to check that out. Potentially, it's the you know the, the next big thing after yield farming and so forth. But yeah, these gas fees are are, are an issue um, for Ethereum to reach that that twenty k level. I don't think that would come purely off the back of of speculation and institutional investment. Uh, you know, I, I definitely see Bitcoin soaring because investors get that. You know, we're going to see those pension funds, mutual funds, etc., come in. Ethereum for me, you know, it's we've still got to see that 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 growth and and, and the usability yeah. to, to reach those sort of figures. Um, you know, five to ten k Ethereum is very realistic for me uh, this year. Twenty. Mm. Yeah, it's the same for me. You know, but it, it's it's what we said in the beginning. You know, it's institutional investors that probably will drive these prices. Institutional investors at the moment are looking at Bitcoin, Ethereum. I think Grayskull even opened the fund for Chainlink at the moment, but I don't know for sure. But the, the cool stuff I find is that uh, Micah Saylor, I think for MicroStrategy, they are now in the first week of February, he's doing an event yeah. for more than 1,000 CEOs of all the big companies, and he is giving away his playbook for free. Correct. How we exchange yeah. all his reserve assets into Bitcoin. If this mm. guy is going to give this playbook for free, like the manual to all those other CEOs of these huge companies, believe me, they will see the results. They will see and create FOMO by cause of this. And they will all um, start to exchange a small part of the reserve assets into Bitcoin, I think. Because, you yeah, know, it's, for, it's me, just, well, for me, I mean, that, that one there's a, 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 a biggie. I mean, that guy has understood how the dollar has been de debased here. Uh, I think he's put a figure of it was. I've heard him talk 15%, you know, you've got to be beating 15% uh, with, with, with over the cash rate at the moment to, to be making any profit. I, I heard him say yesterday, 25%. So yeah, he, you know, he, he's really educating, uh, you know, those institutional uh, players on, on putting their treasury in, in, into, into yeah. Bitcoin. That's fantastic. I, I think at the moment we're seeing a little bit of wait and see from uh, these, these institutional players around how the, you know, the Biden, uh, government will will handle things. Uh, I think that's only He's natural. Positive. 
<laughs> I, I said I, I said in one of my videos, but I just it slipped out of my mouth. I always said, but you know, I I he, he almost looks dead, this Biden guy. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and then my wife, I was walking with my wife, and she's like, yeah, but he's very old. I said, yeah, we are old, but we don't look dead, you know. <laughs> like, uh, um, but <clears throat> I think he is positive at the moment. You know, he's assigning certain crypto-minded people to very important roles when it comes to the Great. monetary. Um, uh, issues in, in America. So even this Janet Yellen, I, I really love that because I think Janet Yellen, she was the treasury secretary or something. And she, the first thing she did was, no, I don't believe in crypto. And uh, I don't know if Bitcoin and it's all like, ah, it doesn't sum up. And the day after she came with an interview, completely positive. I really imagine Biden calling this woman, hey, Janet, what are you doing on your first working day? And she's like, why? Why are you talking uh, negative about the evolution of money? And then Janet will be, oh, no, sorry, Mr. Biden. <laughs> and the day after, she was like, I think cryptocurrency can be very positive for the evolution of the monetary system. I'm like, you can already see the movement of the United States into adapting cryptocurrencies. Even now in uh, Davo, we have the World Economic Forum, two days of the old days. Again, they were talking about Bitcoin. They are calling it restructuring the digital currencies. Yeah, yeah. Well, Janet, Janet came out with that that uh, the classic, you know, being used for terrorist financing on literally on her first day. I, I, I mean, <laughs> how stupid can you be? But she was stabbed. She was stabbed on her on the finger. I, I she... think so. Yeah, I, I, I think so. But yeah, look, as you say, it's on the agenda at uh, at Davos, and so it should be. I think another thing that people sort of miss the point. You know, these big institutions that they're obliged to take positions when the market cap of certain assets reaches uh, a certain level. You know, you and I were doing a, a, a live show the other day, and we passed a trillion. It's pulled pulled back just below that at the moment, but. They're, they're big figures. You know, everyone's talking in terms of uh, Bitcoin surpassing gold. I think it's actually important to remember that while gold might have a $10 trillion market cap, it's actually more like five or half of that that's actually traded. So as we go through the gears here, uh, you know, up, up, up to, you know, a $2 trillion market cap, I think we're, we're you know, that that's, Real adoption from institutions is going to be massive. We still haven't seen the, the you know the ease of actually coming into the space for retail investors. Uh, it's yeah. still difficult, you yes. know, Didi. I, I've been holding hands for the last few weeks, and you know, I, I've had people's banks call up while I'm sitting next to them, cancelling their or blocking their credit cards <laughs> as they're buying crypto. So this sort of this sort of thing still exists. But yeah. in Singapore, you're going to be able to buy. You know, you can go online and buy crypto from your bank. Uh, that's that's yeah. imminent. It's about to happen in the US as well. That is only doing this to the price when it's yeah. when that on ramp is is, is is simple. Even, um, even if, you know if if PayPal goes live all over the world, then we will see the same. And what you were just saying, the market cap, Sean. Yes, look, this is like the stock to flow market value. You know, it's not. It's just data. You can see. You know, this is the this is this is the silver. This is the diamonds. This is the gold. This is the real estate market. Yeah, you know. Yeah. If we are on track with Bitcoin, it will take a couple of years, maybe to 2030, that we reach this market cap. If we just yeah. keep following this growth curve, um, we will. We, we already are almost swallowing silver, diamonds, and gold. And then it's natural because you know people will understand that there will only be 21 million Bitcoins. And yeah. if we keep growing this curve because of the halvings and everything, yeah, for me, it's very obvious, but for a lot of new uh, people, it's still a little bit scary. I think that's... Uh... Yeah, I mean, you know, the, the other thing, I've, I've, I've had, had an economist on recently and, you know, looking, looking at the big macro factors, but it, it's, for me, it's all, all, also fascinating, just that, that everyday interaction with people. I've got these young cousins running around who own crypto. You know, there, there's, I think there's this level of society that have actually taken to crypto. You know, the, the, so many people have missed out on buying a house. It's just beyond people's reach. And that's actually only going to get even more difficult with, with the amount of money being printed. You know, if you're already in real estate or you own a lot of equities, you're going to be fine. The rich are getting richer. But I think a lot of, you know, that 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 sort of lower 30% of uh, of people in the economy, they, they, they are taking that time to understand crypto. It's something they can get into. You know, who the hell, what millennials buying gold, for God's sake, that ain't happening. Uh, we're now got the I, high I, net worth I, individuals coming in. We've got institutions coming in. 
Um, yeah, it's a runaway train at this point, on uh, in my opinion. Yeah, you know, did you see? Uh, wait, John, I I want to share this one. I don't know if you saw it, but I really like this one. Uh, give me one sec. This one, I I tweeted yesterday. Um, I, I you know Plan B. I yep. created now Plan B, which stands for Plan Didi. <laughs> Sell all luxury stuff, house included. Go all into Bitcoin. Minimize your monthly costs by living on a cheap tropical island. Live life and wait for the next bull run top. Exchange your Bitcoin to a stable coin at the top. Buy back more Bitcoin at the bottom. And repeat from number four. And then this guy gave me a really good add-on. He's like, no, Didi, you're doing it wrong. Uh, number six should be, as number five, exchange your Bitcoin to a stable coin. And six should be, get high yield on the stable coin and live off the interest whilst waiting for the bottom and then buy back your Bitcoin. So this is plan B. So just make a screenshot and do plan B, plan D, and you will be okay. <laughs> and by the way, Sean, about the family token you were asking me, yes, we got listed on CoinGecko. Um, and you can see indeed, yeah, we uh, the, the price is uh, moving up and down because there was a question I think earlier about the Bitcoin, uh, about the family token, how it can increase and go down in value, um, because the liquidity is of course could, uh, made by Ethereum by the Ethereum pair, and when mm -hmm. Ethereum moves up, then the family token moves up a little bit with it as well. Um, right. We are at the moment have a total liquidity of two hundred fourteen thousand US dollar. The family price is around thirty four dollar cents. But we, uh, we started around like uh, $4, cents, I think, at the beginning, uh, two months ago. So there was a lot of growth in family token. And that is also because we give rewards to people that provide us liquidity. So we built a real uh, community. Um, mm. So that's, that's, yeah, that's what I, um, so you can see the pool tokens are now 210,000 families and it's about 82 Ethereum in the, in the liquidity. So uh, you can see the movements every day. So it's all there on info.uniswap.com. You can see everything about the family token. And of course, uh, since today, also on CoinGecko, which is really cool. <laughs> I love there geckos, by the way. I miss <laughs> Thailand. <laughs> Fantastic. I want my own coin. Jealous. <laughs> <laughs> you should have a hard forking coin. Why don't you do it? It's a social coin. You can use it as a very uh, nice social oh, I mean, well, You know, I, th I, th I think it's fascinating seeing the likes of you, you, yourself and, and Vesser, you know, launching these tokens. You know, I'm, I'm doing some work at the moment uh, with, with a friend of mine who's uh, sort of building the channels for uh, security token offerings. I'm also uh, securitizing <clears throat> the equity in hard forking. That's actually going to be a security token and equity. Um, as, as opposed to a, a utility token like yours. But yeah, maybe in the future, Didi. Who knows? Maybe, maybe in 50 years, people are buying beers in Copenhagen with our tokens. <laughs> yeah. You know, maybe we will, in 50 years, we will have like a lot of social money all over the world, all communities using different social money, decentralized versions of peer-to-peer -peer cash that we can um, interactively exchange with each other all over the world, depending on which community you are. You know, we don't know what is going to happen. Um, you know, that's yeah. why I always say I just try to enjoy life every day and uh, yeah, and, and build, biddle, 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 a little bit more, a little bit more, and, and to make sure that we, as a community, are able to make a small difference in this world. You know, share yeah. some positivity. And the uh, quest, quest question here: uh, Well, Samuel says trading crypto has allowed him to buy a house. Well done, Samuel. Crypto, love it. Uh, could you could, could you maybe just touch more on, on the utility of of, of uh, the family token? Didi, what uh, what are what are you what are people using it for? So at the moment, the family token. I started to use the family token as social money, which means I just wanted to change the way of appreciation of the content we created as YouTube influencers or YouTube creators. So yeah. normally the model works like this: I create a YouTube video, the community watches it, I get income from YouTube, and the 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 people that spend time in watching my content, they don't earn shit. <laughs> they just, it costs them time. So I was like, this is not fair. I want to change this. I want to make it possible for me to incentivize people for watching my content. I'm thankful that people watch the Bitcoin family content. I'm thankful that people become member of the Bitcoin family community. So what I started to do is I started to hide QR codes in my YouTube videos that if people scan those QR codes, they earn family tokens. 
even if it was like two family tokens, it's still 25 cents for watching a YouTube video. So that is how it all started. I wanted to incentivize people for, you know, doing what they do. And then by creating this fund on the back end that would be filled with all the projects that we've been starting by creating a community, I could help other people. So that is the only utility there is. There is no utility for me to become rich. There's no utility for the people that buy family to become rich. It is mostly used for helping as a community change the world by launching really cool projects in a decentralized way, very transparent way. Mm -hmm. So this fund that we will be launching this year will be completely transparent and open book. You can see what comes in, in fees, everything, and what goes out. We are going to assign ambassadors all over the world that will be able to share those funds with those people that need it locally. So we are going to do it as a big Bitcoin family. There will no be, there will won't be any centralized uh, fix. So that is that is utility of the family token. And at the moment, of course, um, there is a lot of interest. So yes, some people are providing liquidity so that they get some interest on their money, which they don't get on banks. This is the whole DeFi industry. It's built on DeFi industry. This is how yep. people and why people stake. And you can stake family token by you know providing liquidity and. You know, and the market cap that we have will only be used at the moment. We need to use it for to set up some small projects. We are not going to withdraw any liquidity out of it because it's not needed. We will withdraw the liquidity out of the projects we start, like the trading fees, like all that stuff, the sales of these hoodies, the sales of the T-shirts. Everything will go a percentage into this fund. Yep. So we don't need to withdraw liquidity out of the family token. We, we take it out of the projects. And that will make sure, in my opinion, that the, that the family token will keep, you know, moving in, a, in the correct way. I'm not a financial advisor. I can't even say this. I think that's like chilling your own project. That's terrible, Didi. <laughs> you can't chill your own project. But that's what we are trying to build. And that's, um, it, it's succeeding at the moment. It's growing at the moment. And more and, peop more and more people start to understand it. And that's why I think we are growing slowly. I don't want to yeah. grow fast. It's just, uh, that, that's, that's all I, I, I can say about it. And um, we are true. family. Do you know the song? Yeah. Can you remember the song? We are family. Da, 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 da. I think that should be the song of our uh, of the family token shop. <laughs> the Bitcoin family taking over the world. You're gonna, you're gonna have your own song, Didi. Sure. Uh, there is already one Didi Bam Bam song. Did you see that one on YouTube? <laughs> no. Did you see it? No. Serious, you didn't. Sean, come on, wait. Have you got a link? <laughs> a, I will give a, you the, the notes. I, was... <laughs> I will. I'll give you the link. I thought you already knew. Hey, oh, Sean, maybe maybe, maybe I have, Didi. Yeah, it's already <laughs> listed. If, if you got, got, a, got a link, send it to me. I'll put it below the video. It's already lit. Really, it's already listed on Spotify. It's already listed on iTunes. It's already listed on all these platforms. Yet yeah, the song is officially live on Spotify. It's, really? The song is called. Oh, yeah, the song is called "Hold All My Bitcoins." I hold on my bitcoins here. I hold on my bitcoins there. I hold on my bitcoins fucking everywhere. It's a really cool song. It was written by Lore Olivas. No, it was it was written by me. I wrote the text, but Lore Olivas, one of the subscribers of the community. And oh, saw this. I remember. yes, I did talk to you about this. Yeah, Fantastic. yeah, it's live now. It's live everywhere. Really cool. And the next song is coming up uh, very soon as well. But that will be more like a Copangan DJ house song. So uh, that one is really cool. That's like bam and to the moon and all that stuff in a very up-tempo beat song. So yeah. And I got an yes. offer now to create a rap song as well. So maybe you and I can do a rap song. <laughs> I'm, uh, yes, I'm well known for my rapping, Didi. So count me in. <laughs> count me in, my friend. I'm all over it. <laughs> <laughs> I do miss you, mate. Oh. I'm looking forward to seeing you again in person, ho hopefully at some point this year. Any any update on, uh, on the family's movements of, of, i suppose it's quite difficult for anyone to plan anything right now um oh it's it's um it's 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 really difficult at the moment for me to um, um to, to 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 say what we are going to do because we are really on this um we are doubting we are really doubting we we, we would love of course to travel further now from Portugal, but Portugal is also in a short and small lockdown of two. Oh, really? Oh, one second. Sorry. I need to stop something. One second. Um, so, 
it's difficult, but the, our dream still is to drive around the world with this. Is it you or is it me? I hear like. Uh, I think it might be you. Did you, Sorry. Did you open your yeah. song? I closed YouTube. Um, so our dream is still to travel around the world with this Bitcoin car. And we have this car now. And we have sponsors that have, are helping us to, to reach our dream as well, of course. Of course, we could use the family uh, funds as well, but we don't want to use that one. We are going to do this separate of the whole Bitcoin family. And we would love to drive with this car to those areas in the world where we will be setting up these projects physically ourselves. Yep. I don't want to give money or give family tokens, or whatever. I just also want to help physically. So that is still our dream. The dream now is a little bit uh, difficult to uh, fulfill because of the whole lockdown situation and all the flu situation everywhere. So we are figuring out, maybe we will stay a little bit longer in Portugal at the moment. And um, mm -hmm. I got an offer to build a blockchain community here in Portugal, which is really cool because we want to build a ecological, self-sufficient eco village in Portugal. So there is a Dutch company creating these beautiful um, pop-up houses, let's say like this, but then self-sufficient. And you don't need contact in media. Like, Didi, can we build something like you're building in House of Dao in Koh Phangan in Thailand and in Blockchain Valley in Bulgaria? Can we something do something together with you in, in Portugal as well? So I'm thinking of creating a small village here in Portugal with these pop-up houses, but they will be all there so that we can create events around it. You know, educate people on crypto, educate people in blockchain, uh, host companies here to, you know, create blockchain mm. projects for the future. So create another community like House of Dow, but now in Portugal. And then of course, with sponsorships of Binance, you know, for example, Binance get a Binance house, um, Bybit gets a Bybit house, you know, Bitcoin gets a Bitcoin house, Litecoin Foundation, a Litecoin Foundation house. So these houses will be built in the colors of these projects and they will be funding these projects as well. So that all the events that take place there, you know, is like a huge event where sponsors pay, money to have a shield or how do you call it again a banner or something but now yeah. our whole house will be binance main minded but you know it's just completely at the beginning and um, it's just an idea and we were working on it the we are already creating the pictures and everything now and um so i'm doing a lot sean so as a family we could end up in Copangan again to support house of dow and mm -hmm. also support paid network, you know, paid network from Carl. Uh, I, I, I became ambassador for them. It's growing tremendously. So we could go to Oh, really? To Carl, Carl. Yes, okay. it's, it, they, they launched on Uniswap this week. I think they have already a, a volume of more than 20 million um, in the first two days. Really? Um, yeah, that one is really taking off. It's really, really taking off. Paidnetwork.com. Um, sorry, I'm shilling this project, but I really like what they are doing. Uh, they launched on Uniswap this week, and it's 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 really there's a lot of volume, and it's uh, it's it's becoming a very, very big project. Well, I know so Carl could absolutely be, lives and breathes crypto, so I'll, uh, I'll I'll check out that project. Twenty four hey. seven, and he was uh, I, 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 I you know I, I saw Carl uh, in in the times before in Copenhagen when we did parties and everything together, but the last uh, I think twelve months uh, he kind of changed into a workaholic. I saw him working twenty four seven on paid network and people were telling me he is only working and he, uh, it's just a very positive guy. Uh, he's a lot of love. And um, I think he, he now just hit the nail with this project and it's a really cool okay. project. And you can see this in the volume at the moment. Um, a lot of people believe it and a lot of people see what he's building. So Copangan still for me, it has my heart. It was the first video that we I ever did it. together on Copangan. I miss it. I miss even the crowbar, the shabby thing of Chris, uh, but I, I miss Copangan and a lot of projects there I'm building. Uh, but, it, it, you know, I don't want to go in the lockdown with my family for two weeks in a hotel in Thailand. So the moment Thailand yeah. opens up, we could be going to Thailand as well. But maybe we will take this Bitcoin mobile, um, the Bitcoin car here, from here all the way to Thailand. We will drive again, you know, through Switzerland, to Turkey, to Slovenia, to Turkey, and then all the way through India into Thailand. That would be I was going to say, I, I know you guys love to be on the move. <laughs> I mean, you've been in Portugal yeah. for quite a while now. How's... how's, how's... How's the family uh, dealing with it? Are they happy to be in one place for this long or? Yeah, that's the sad part. <laughs> <laughs> oh, actually, so it's just you that likes to keep moving all the time. <laughs> no, the family loves to move as well, but we, we, we decided as a family to start to slow travel a little bit more. It's not like we did at the, we used to go one week here, one week there, one week there. And now we are like, uh, we spent four months in Thailand. Now we are spending four months in Portugal and then the mm. next four, four months maybe in Turkey. And that, because we want to really get connections with the community. And I, 
I find it really beautiful that if I see that every time I live somewhere, now we live as a family here in Portugal, we build a new community mm. and I get more people in adopting Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, the beach bar, the fish restaurant, the sailing crew club, they all accept Bitcoin now. So I can live my life mm. with Bitcoins. And every time we move and stay so longer, we have the ability to create these communities. And then, yeah. so that's why we slow did travel. You, to, 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 sorry to interrupt you, but one thing that popped in my head the other day, I was you know, looking at uh, some, some friends whose kids just haven't been in school for so long with, with these lockdowns. And obviously you've homeschooled your, your children for, for a number of years now. Um, yeah. I think that's quite an interesting story there. You know, I know, I know you had some sort of reality TV companies coming in and obviously travel restrictions sort of held that up. But I think, you know, I, I, what you've done with your children, I've been around them for, for, for quite a while and seen, you know, their, their diligence, they're always studying. But I think for so many people now, your story would be so interesting to see how you've you've helped motivate your children to do that because that's kind of become the norm for so many families now to have these kids at home having to effectively homeschool. Yeah, so any sort of comments, any comments from people <laughs> watching that uh, how how do you get your kids to actually? <laughs> it's a, it's like it's a it's a mindset. I can I can say it like this. In my vision and probably also in your vision, Sean, um, is the world is changing very fast. And I think we are going to see a faster change than we saw the internet creating. And yeah. in my opinion, we should prepare our kids for the future and not for the past. And that is why I homeschool our kids and prepare them for the future. If you look back at all the events that we have seen eh, on, in Davos, on the World Economic Forum, on the speakers, I've been analyzing a lot of them. And you can see that a lot of people are expecting to take that AI will take over the next five to 10 years. We won't be working in fabrics anymore. Robots will be working. We won't be working at DHL anymore. Robots are working. We won't deliver packages as DHL delivery person anymore. Robots or drones will be delivering. A lot of jobs are going to be replaced by artificial intelligence. Mm. Why would you prepare the kids still for those jobs yeah. when you know that the kids need other tools to be successful in the future? And mm -hmm. the only thing that kids and makes human different from artificial intelligence is emotional. So we think as a family, it's very important, important to improve the emotional intelligence of a kid. Make it creative because a robot can be created. A robot can only do what you tell him to do and repeat and repeat and can learn, but cannot become creative. So we need to focus on getting creativity in the kids and kids finding their passion and not evolve this into a creativity because that is mm -hmm. what we will miss for the future. We will have all kids that want to be a doctor, but who, who, who are we to think that we can still use doctors in the future? This mm -hmm. will be very precise robotic arms doing operations. It's not going to be man jobs anymore. And I think that is what, Everything is now uh, uh, pointing to. If you look at everything what is happening, the digital, the decentralizing of the world, artificial intelligence stepping in, your refrigerator already ordering your groceries at a supermarket, which will be then paid by cryptocurrency in the future, probably backed up by the digital gold Bitcoin. Maybe even you will use the central bank's digital currency or the artificial intelligence will do this. This is the future. Cars, taxi drivers, they won't exist anymore. Yep. A car will be driving self without a driver all over the world. You can just push a button on your telephone, get into the car, drop you on place B, get out of the car. It will be paid with cryptocurrency. All this is the future. So we need to prepare our kids for this future. And, and it's a very long story. And, and, and that's why we think yeah, that preparing for the past is useless. And, 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 and now people get to see that if you want to learn your kids more about the vision you have as a parent, you should attend more time to your kids. You, not, you should not drop your baby at nine months at daycare and at, at four years at a school to get their heads filled with information from the past. And then the next step is that they need to re remember all this data about the second world war, about all that stuff to, for what? We live mm -hmm. in an we live at different times. My kids, of course, I, we teach them to write and to read and to do calculations. <clears throat> but if I tell my daughter, ah, oh, you need to know, uh, uh, remember how the 
what kind of formula it is in, in, in math it works. She's like, Dad, man, I have Siri. I ask Siri, Siri, how much is 1 million divided by 7 times 44 divided by 0 0.3? And I have the answer in two seconds. Why should I learn this out of the top of my head if I know how to creatively use the sources we have? So there's yeah. a lot of story about that. So sorry, I'm talking too long again. It's getting a too long show for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think your your ladies are absolutely a fantastic, well-rounded young young woman now. Um, yeah, I, I know a, a lot of people are really struggling, having having uh, all, all stuck at home together with, especially with the kids, and and you know they've a lot of them have missed a year's education now, um, with another another year ahead potentially of that. So uh, yeah, I mean your your story once again, I think sort of a shining light on, on that on that front. So uh, I'm sure most of the people that are watching or will watch this do know who you are, but if you don't. There's a link below to Didi's channel. Get over there. Check it out. He makes fantastic daily content. Uh, if you are trading, uh, I'm going to be using the BAM indicator as of next week. So you'll be able to follow my, my progress there. And yeah, as I say, you know, I've, I've got some friends that have, have joined your, your community. They're, they're very impressed with, with your Discord, the amount of support that happens there, and, and just the, the people that are involved in general. Obviously, you got the family token. Get over and, and learn a bit more about that as well, people. So, Didi, thank you, sir. What are you up to uh, today? You, you back down on the beach to make another video shortly? Yeah, I, I had a very lazy wake up this morning because I uh, I didn't expect to be listed on Coin uh, Gecko. So, my whole mailbox and uh, Telegram and all everything is full with people that want to be community members and that want to have us listed on exchanges. Blah blah blah. Um, wow. so I'm, so I'm very happy that I could do this live with you today. I, I probably, yeah, it's very exciting, but also very, uh, yeah, it's, it's un unknown terrain for me. So I need to uh, update my knowledge on all that stuff. So it's, uh, it will be a busy weekend. Um, but today, I think, and later this day, it's, uh, I will go into the beach, make another video, a short one, and then, uh, you know, try to um, get ahead of everything I see popping up all the time in my trailer phone and my screen at the moment. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right, my friend, uh, a pleasure. It's uh, getting getting late in the evening here, and uh, you're just beginning your day, so do enjoy it. And we'll uh, we'll speak again in the very near future. Thank you again for having me. And if you know one of the mayors or like the president of New Zealand, can you arrange with him that we come there because there is no lockdown? Is there something possible? Just you know, we will stay there for two months or three months. <laughs> I would love to. I would absolutely love to have you here. I mean, it's. Uh, I, I have to remind myself every day to, you know, just just appreciate. It. We had a. It was looking like we might get locked down again yesterday, but that seems to have alleviated. I'm just loving not having to wear a freaking mask and yeah. check in everywhere I go. And obviously, as you know, I spent a good good chunk of last year completely by myself. So it's great to see family and friends back here and. Get out and run around like a lunatic in a in a, in a paddock, <laughs> which yeah. is what we do. <laughs> yeah. Okay, man. Uh, thanks so much. Give my love and greetings to all your family, Sean, over there, and uh, tell I them will we indeed, are coming. Didi. They're uh, they're they're, coming they're all, they're all dying to meet you in, in person, mate. So uh, we'll make it happen at some point this year, whether it's New Zealand, Portugal, or or, or Thailand. They're all three three very good options. Yeah. yeah all right, my friend. <laughs> So bam, bam indicator for me from from next week, people. You'll uh, I'll, I'll I'll certainly be showing you my trades and how, how I get on there. Uh, and as I say, do do follow Didi's channel, his Twitter link and YouTube's are below. And check out the bam, bam indicator if you think it's uh, for you. I'm certainly using it myself. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you, you 